well, but it kind of varies from year to year. Um, is it okay if I record? Yes, that's fine. Okay. Um, okay, I'll just get straight into it. Yeah. Did you get? Did you have a chance to look at the website at all? I did look at it a little. Yeah, I played around with what I could. Mm-hmm. Um, so it looks like a neat program. Yeah. Um, so I, I was just going to ask, um, how are you trying to solve the problem of cultural sensitivity? Because it is a problem today. And I think it starts in education and teaching students young. Um, how are you trying to solve that problem? And do you use specific curriculum tools um, daily? or And if you do, how often do you use them? And uh, those are great questions. So, um, you know, I think it's a really important piece to look at, um, to just get to know different cultures. I think that's one of the roles of a language class is really getting to know and understand different cultures. I think even just straightforward as a lot of people go into French with this mentality that the French are a certain way and that it's part of my job, not just to teach students the language, but to really kind of get them to understand the culture and the cultural differences to recognize that what may come across as like rudeness or whatever coming from the French is actually a cultural difference. And how do we get or how do we kind of um, work towards that understanding? Um, I also really try and um, bring in different cultures. The French culture, you know, they were colonizers. So they're, the language is in a lot of different countries. And so we look at um, French in the um, French speaking African world. We look at kind of the history of um, French in Vietnam and really try and bring in um, different cultures. Um, we do in my level three class, which is juniors, we've done, um, we've read books by um, Muslim f French speaking women in Senegal. So, you know, just really trying to expose them to um, that it's not just, just because it's the language of France, which is the Western European culture, doesn't mean that there's not a lot out there um, that will help, you know, kind of expose them, my students, to these different cultures. Very cool. Um, and say we, say we have a film that you're interested in showing your students um, that's French, what would you want to support it, um, maybe to adhere to your curriculum at Notre Dame? Um, but what would you want with it? Would you want vocabulary from the film translated from French to English? Would you want discussion questions in, in French? Um, would you want what, what, what would you want with it? Would you want a sy synopsis of the film, maybe talking a little bit about the French culture in the film? Um, what, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think those are all some great ideas, and it would really depend on what level I was working with with my students. For example, at level one, I probably would want a lot more of vocab. Um, what what are basic you know basic takeaways that they could have? You know, they're not going to be understanding a lot of it. So um, for them, it would be what culture do you see in the video? What um, examples of things we've talked about? Like, do how do they greet each other or um, what's what form are they addressing each other in so are they using a formal way of address are they using an informal way of address those are kind of things that we look out for in level one um, and it's really kind of surface level of what can you see from the visual what and where do you hear the words that we're saying whereas at my AP level which is my seniors mostly you know I'd be looking more for um, context seeing um, culture in action because my AP level class is a very culture based class. It's not so language. I mean, we're, we're using French rather than learning French. Mm -hmm. And so um, it would be a lot more of kind of the in depth. Um, how are you seeing the culture alive in in the films? Okay, that's so it. kind of like level one is much more. What do you see in, in level four would be how do you see it in action? Mm -hmm. Okay, very interesting. Do you use any videos in class? Because I spoke to um, a Lop uh, uh, Lopez, who teaches at MIDI, who's a French teacher at MIDI. Yeah, I know her. <laughs> she was my yeah. French teacher at MIDI. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, she uh, she said she uses Edpuzzle. 
and she mm -hmm. uses Diablo. Those are the two things she uses. I'm wondering, do you use those or? I use Edpuzzle. Um, I haven't used Diablo. Um, I use Edpuzzle, and then I use there's this um, French uh, YouTube channel called Un Jour Une Question, which is one day one question, and they're just like little short one and a half minute videos of um, cartoon explanations of. Uh, issues to kids, like kids get to write in a question. I use a lot of those um, and they're really, um, they're short and they're accessible and like depending on what level I'm working with, they uh, work well for freshmen or seniors, like there's just depending on how you use them. Mm -hmm. um, and I do a lot of, um, my department chair is really into these things called integrated performance assessments. And basically what they are is they're, um, you, it's a very structured concept where you ask, okay, what's the main idea of the video? What are vocab terms from the video? What are cultural comparisons in the video? There, it's a very kind of formatted, like every video we do is kind of the same structure. We look at vocab, we look at, um, like they have to, for example, they might say there are five points and you have to identify which ones are mentioned in the video and then provide some more data on it. So I might say the video um, tells you in what year the Eiffel Tower was built and then you have to tell me what year the Eiffel Tower was built based on the information you got from the video. So um, they're um, kind of like students get to kind of listen to the video over and over again and then answer their questions at their own pace kind of thing. Okay, so it's mostly short clips then. You don't show like long, long films or? You know, I tend to show longer movies in the higher levels of French where we're, mm -hmm. where they have like a um, cultural purpose. Example, um, in the, in level three, we do a unit on women in, in the French speaking African world. Um, we show this movie called Inshallah Dimanche, which is about a woman who, um, has to move to France because her husband has moved there for work and she's joining him in the, in the 1970s and her kind of cultural adjustment to moving from Algeria to France. And so we look a lot at the culture and the expectations on a woman in that time period and what that would look like. So I've shown movies like that. Um, a lot of times if we're reading a book that has a movie that goes with it, we'll use the movie as support in understanding kind of um, children's book and then they've made some movies that go along with it and so sometimes I'll I, sometimes I, I rarely just we don't sit down and watch a whole movie mm -hmm. but um, we'll watch portions of movies spread out depending on how you know how it fits into the curriculum so our slogan um, at screen 360 is connecting international peers near and far Mm -hmm. So we, we want to create a synchronous watching experience with other classrooms in whether it's in the district or in the state of California or just somewhere completely different, whether it's rural Ohio or um, Spain or France, for example. Mm -hmm. um, do you see value in that to have your kids interacting, maybe watching a French film and then interacting with another classroom, another French classroom somewhere else? I mean, I would love to find ways to get my students to interact more with international student, other in French speakers. Um, I think it's a really important piece of uh, language. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, the hardest thing would be timing. Obviously, you know, if it's somewhere in France, there are nine hour time difference from us. Um, so that does offer a, you know, it would be hard to have us watch something and then watch something at the same time or however, or find a time that meets or, you know, so that, that would be a challenge, but, you know, I certainly think there's, especially with zoom, we can overcome some of those challenges. Yeah. Have you been, you taught online this past? Yeah. Semester? How was yeah. it? Was it, it was different? interesting. It was hard because you don't, what you miss in the classroom is kind of the, the chit chat. I'm used to just constant noise around me and my students will mute and I, they maybe answer when I directly ask them things. But other than that, it's, it's very quiet. You feel like you're talking to an empty room. 
-hmm. there's none of the back and forth over like, oh, this one time my uncle went to Paris and saw the Eiffel Tower. You know, there's just none of that kind of playful um, yeah. back and forth. That's wild. Would you be interested in potentially piloting Screen 360 in the fall to see? Sure. I mean, I'd be interested in seeing if it, it could work. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm and open we, to anything. <laughs> we would definitely cater to your curriculum. So mm -hmm. um, whatever movies you like, um, you you would probably want to show French um, movies, right? International yeah. movies from France. Mm -hmm. Or, um, you know, the Francophone world is can't you know there's there's canadian movies there's you know okay in french yeah okay yeah for sure um and uh, how would you recommend screen 360 to get more teachers engaged with it i mean i think it's just exposure to even knowing it, it exists i certainly um if if you know i find that it's helpful i would certainly pass it on to my department uh mm -hmm. I can certainly even talk to my co-French teacher. She, um, she's always looking for new things to try. So I think word of mouth would be a huge piece. I think just, you know, knowing it exists is the hardest part. So um, I know a lot of the teachers, like right now, my coworkers and I have like an ongoing list of these are resources that we have that we find are useful and helpful, especially in the, um, digital teaching method. Um, so we, it would all be about um, how to use it. My curiosity would be, um, would there be a cost to it? Yes, so we're, that's what we're trying to figure out. And we're trying to figure out the best model for that, whether we should do straight to the customer, like we, we give it straight to the teacher, individual mm -hmm. teachers pay for it. And we're thinking maybe $5 a month or do we do we service it to schools and districts for yearly licensing maybe fifteen hundred dollars a month i mean we want it really cheap and accessible just right. to see yeah. how teachers like it so okay. and like you know i'm looking at my school which is you know 600 students and we have you know f six language teachers that you know something like fifteen hundred dollars would certainly be a no for my school like that would be a it's, huge amount it's, but it's, yeah, it's fifteen hundred for the year. For right. The year. Yeah. They they just wouldn't, you know, we're we're not we're not that kind of budget of a school. Um so you know, I think that would make a difference. Um I think you know, maybe you would want to consider like how many teachers would be using it in that context. Um certainly, you know, maybe you're gonna have twice as many teachers that would we would have at, at Notre Dame. Um that's often a, a barrier for us is um mm -hmm. Like sometimes, you know, pricing does matter. So mm -hmm. that would be a curious, you know, a point for, for us. How much do you pay for Edpuzzle? Right now we don't, um, oh. we have never done a pub, a, a, a full price. <laughs> we, we tend to go for the sites that we can get the minimal use for free. Um, we actually have a, a ranking right now with our with our um, vice principal over what are our top priorities as far as things we want to pay for. Um, okay. So um, we, you know, we tend to go with, you know, the hundred and fifty dollar a year for <laughs> kind of thing. Um, so that's, you know, that, that is limiting for us as far as having, being able to access some of the, the pieces. But I do know, I mean, I do acknowledge that, you know, movie rights and things are more expensive than just mm -hmm. being able to answer questions on a YouTube video, which Ed Puzzle is, you know, it's. Uh, yeah. I wonder what's the top priority um, at your school. Do you know, like what, what, what kind of pay for like the top priority what goes first you know i don't really get to see a lot of the the budget stuff i can tell you some of the sites we do pay for as modern languages we pay for um conjugamos which is okay. like verb drilling yeah. um we're looking at for next year we're probably going to pay for pair deck which is a site that um lets us um, kind of play with vocab. It's it's kind of like interactive Google Slides kind of thing. Like you can put up a question and it, like you can put a smiley face next to your answer kind of thing. Mm -hmm. 
and that's um, one of the ones that we'll be we'll be paying for next year, um, which is uh, has a free <laughs> account, and then um, some people will be paying. It's 150 per teacher per year. Oh wow! wow. So, uh, but not everybody will have it. So it's uh, okay. Yeah, that's a lot. That's. Um, do you think five per month subscription is too much? Then I think five per month sounds like a deal to me. Okay. Um, so, because I, I imagine it would be a per teacher. I think in our case, it would be a per teacher deal. Like I don't think mm -hmm. um, it would necessarily work for every teacher that would need a school account. Okay. Right. Yeah. Then the question becomes like, how often would you use it, right? I mean, for right, yeah, five a month, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I also, you know, like how much class time can I use on videos? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is a, you know, maybe I do one, one full movie a semester, mm -hmm. um, and then a lot of times the videos tend to be short and like quick use kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We were, we were speaking about including television shows mm -hmm. and um, say we have a television show from France in, in French um, and the episodes are maybe 10 minutes to 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Would you show, I mean, if you show like a whole season and you show maybe one episode, would you show one episode a week or? Probably not. I, you know, I'm only, I only see my students twice a week. So, okay. um, yeah, for next year. Um, so that would be, you know, maybe one episode every three weeks, maybe. Mm -hmm. Would it be something that, you know, with, with the remote learning, you know, mm -hmm. what's going to happen this fall, would it be something that, you know, you would assign for them to watch at home? And That's then probably more likely with, um, you know, right now we're looking at kind of some students being um, that you'd have half your class on campus while half your class is at home. And so, you know, we're kind of looking for things that we can have our students do from home that would still engage them and have them um, feel like they're learning. So uh, that's definitely, I found videos to be really helpful in this past semester. Um, in fact, I would probably say I started doing more with the learning from home than I would if I were full time in the classroom. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's what we're thinking too. Is uh, I mean, obviously, all schools are going online um, now, but there's also a huge rise in homeschooling. Right. That you know, maybe videos are something a lot, a lot of people would turn to for education. And I absolutely agree with that. They they provide so much more than just fun like videos are fun right everybody gets mm -hmm. excited is it movie day but mm -hmm. they you know they they show you culture they oh. you just hear the language in action and also mm -hmm. you know like there's little things that I can't teach them that you know I'm not that they pick up from a video that mm -hmm. they wouldn't necessarily pick up from mm -hmm. a lecture so now in, in a situation like that would it would you say that it, you would <clears throat> strongly desire some sort of uh, writing prompt or some sort of discussion questions to go with that video? Or is that something you would say, no, I would watch it and I would generate those myself? Um, I mean, there's a mix, right? There's there's the time of how long it takes me to do that versus right. mm -hmm. having them there and ready. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I find <laughs> with a lot of pre-made things, um, it's hard to see how they're gonna fit with my specific class. Mm -hmm. um, but when I find a pre-made thing that fits my class, it's like, you know, heaven sent. It's, uh, it's pure yeah. gold. So We interviewed uh, an AP Spanish teacher at Los Altos, and she was saying that she would absolutely love to have the authentic voice life, you know, of, you know, of, of someone in Spain, let's say, story. Mm -hmm. uh, but it would even be more valuable if we, could, if we identify films that fit the AP themes you know, yeah, so that therefore would be fantastic. Yeah, right. Exactly. So, you know, she was, she said, definitely I would use that, you know, but even with my beginning ones, you know, I could, I could use, you know, authentic right. films. For sure. 
Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, as a teacher, one of the hardest things I have is how much time I spend finding these resources. There's, um, I I think especially for French, I think Spanish tends to be a lot more common that people Mm -hmm. have like sites of like, oh, look at all the Spanish resources. And then French, we're really, we're hunting. The other, the other piece is that French movies aren't always, um, appropriate for, for my students <laughs> they have this, this super cute historical movie and then suddenly they have no clothes on and you're like oh, right. <laughs> so much <laughs> right exactly so um and you so know we're examining all those avenues you yeah. know trying to and figure out what's the best we could do you know so like i think i would pay money just to have the list do you know what i mean like it would it would be a huge Mm-hmm. huge resource for me as a French teacher to have access to these right. materials. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, we, I mean, we are definitely thinking about providing a, a package, a teacher package with, mm-hmm. with each film or each TV show that we have. Um, and uh, we definitely want to gear it towards the AP themes. So that would definitely be, do you think that would save you a lot of time? As oh, a yeah. <laughs> For sure. sure. And I align, I align. Ooh, I'm me. Um, I align my other classes with the, not specifically with the AP themes, but so that they feed well. I actually, because as a French teacher, I kind of teach on an island. Like I don't have a lot of other people that I have to really report. You know, it's me. I teach mm-hmm. the class. So there's no one else. So I really get a lot of say in how my lessons go. And so I really mm-hmm. try and align so that even in French one, we're building the the groundwork for these themes that are going to apply in AP. So it's um and and for the past few years I've taught all four levels, so um I really got to kind of weave it through. Yeah. <laughs> so it's uh okay. Is there anyone else you'd uh, recommend for us to speak to, Kathy? Um, yeah, I, you know, I think um, my department chair might be an interesting person to talk to. I'm going to put his um, contact in the, um, he, he teaches a class on, um, it's called Culture and Conversation, and it's uh, film-based, so he might be a really oh. interesting research oh. per- person to talk to. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's very so. cool. Yeah, I'll definitely reach out to him. And he teaches at Notre Dame with Yeah. Him. So. Um, okay, well, thank you so much. We'll, you're welcome. Uh, we'll keep thank in you. touch. Um, yeah. If, you know, if you're interested in piloting, I mean, we'll gear it towards your classroom and um, everything. Sounds great. I look forward to hearing more about your project. Good luck. Okay. Yeah, we'll keep in touch. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you. Have a good 4th of July. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye.